here's another helpful math formula that you can use to figure the hypotenuse or the longest part of a right triangle. And of course, this is the Pythagorean theorem. And it is simple. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Easy to remember and uh, not that difficult to um, figure out. So we will use it to figure out the longest part of the angle. A lot of times um, you're going to use this for figuring roof rafters and the other components of a roof that would be at an angle as long as you can use this type of as long as you can create a triangle with a 90 degree angle which most of the time you can even though the angle of the roof rafter like for a hip let's say might be at a 30 degree angle you can still use something like this to figure it out so it works for tall roofs as well as smaller ones and for building foundations let's say that i built a foundation and i wanted to make sure that it was square i can simply take this side of the angle of the triangle and this side of the triangle and these are usually referred to as legs just like your walking legs in um, math we would have one leg on each side and then the hypotenuse um, or the longer part of the angle. So if I wanted to just double check to make sure the foundation was square, I plug these numbers in to the Pythagorean theorem and then measure across. And then if the measurement is right on the money, then I know that I, uh, I did a good job. If not, you can readjust it to make it square. So great, great uh, math formula. Like I said, it's got to be at a 90 degree angle. You can't use it for something like this. It's got to be something like this, where you have a 90 degree angle here. Now let's go ahead and bring some measurements in here. It is a 10 foot wide building. Half of the span of that is 5 feet or 60 inches. We have a 25 inch height on the, um, at the top here and then 65 inches will be the angle but uh, how do we get there well we're going to have to bring in our calculator and a few extra numbers here to give you an idea what we're doing so let's go ahead and review the formula again a times a or a squared plus b times b equals c squared here's a times a 25 times 25 25 equals 625 so so the square of 25 is 625 the square of 60 is 3600 just multiplying the numbers together then we add these two numbers together right here that gives us 4225 then we push the square root button on the calculator that gives us 4,225, or out of the 4,225, that gives us 65. Now, I don't know how to do all of this. Um, I don't know how to square root or get the square root of a number with a piece of paper and a pencil. The only method I've ever known is by using a calculator. And this is the square root number. This is the, uh, or symbol. This is the symbol for squaring a number. Now, let's go ahead and walk through this exact project here on our calculator 25 times 25 equals 625 let me clear that and then let's just take 25 and square it we're just going to push the symbol here and that brings us to 625 so i'm going to clear that again let's take the 60 and i'm going to square that one 3600 I need to add these two numbers together. So let's add 625 equals 4,225. Now all we got to do is push the square root button to get the angle or the length of our angle. It's that simple. Now, for those of you who understand everything, you don't need any more examples. You can stop the video right here. But for those of you who do need a few more examples, just go ahead and let the video run. I will provide you with two more examples. In this example, I'm going to use feet. 
and uh, instead of inches. So we're going to have 5 feet, 5 squared equals 25. And let's go ahead and clear it. 5 foot 6. Now, 5.5, this is feet. Remember, 6 inches is half of a foot. So our decimal is going to be 5.5. Now, I'm not going to go into explaining all of the stuff here for you, but I can tell you that it might be better to, to convert everything to inches to make it easier for you. Your number is going to come out in inches. You're not going to have to convert anything here to feet. So sometimes it's going to be better just to use inches and you're done with it. So 5.5, we have our measurement here. We need to square it. 30.25. And then we are going to add that to 25 for our the square of 5 here. And then we're simply going to take the square root of that, 5.43. Now, I want to show you something here. We know this is 7 feet, but 0.433, in order to convert that into inches, all you need to do is put 12. There are 12 inches in a foot. We're going to take 12 and we're going to multiply it by 0.433. And that's going to provide us with 5.96. Or basically, this would be 5, and it, it would be a measurement in between an eighth and a quarter. So 5 and an eighth, 5 and 3 sixteenths, something like that. We it, The measurement here would be 7 foot 5. And um, you could just convert this into a fraction, or um, I have them all in my head, uh, I should say most of them here, 0.125 is an eighth of an inch, and 0.25 is a quarter of an inch. And you can see we're right in between here, so this is probably more like 3 sixteenths of an inch. Now in our last example, I'm just going to convert these measurements into inches. So 5 feet is 60 inches, but if I didn't know um, what this was, you know, if you had to figure it out, you're going to enter in five. You got five feet and you're just simply going to multiply that by 12. That's going to bring you to 60. And then you can square that number, 3,600. And I'm just going to write that number down right now, 3,600. And then I'm going to square the other number, the 66 inches. So 66 inches, again, five feet. If I wanted to, I would go. I would just go through the same process as I did here, and well, I'm just going to go through it here. I have five point. I have five feet six inches. I'm going to multiply five times twelve. Twelve inches in a foot. Sixty, and then I'm just going to add six inches to that to get my sixty-six inches. Now I'm going to square the number. This is 4,356. I'm going to write that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and add. Remember, i got to add these two numbers together. So I'm going to add 3,600 to that. That brings us to 7,956. Now I just need to hit the square root number. 89.19. If you remember, the other measurement that we had was 7 foot 5.19 inches, basically. So that comes to 89 and basically 3 sixteenths of an inch. And that about wraps up the video. I have provided you with three examples of converted feet into inches. And I will make another video on how to convert decimals um, into inches, stuff like that. Uh, you might have a decimal, like I said, 1.25 is an eighth of an inch, but you're not going to know that. And uh, sometimes I think just uh, carrying a little chart around for a while, if you're a beginning uh, carpenter, something like that, uh, might help you out with uh, converting decimals until you can memorize all of the decimals. So that will be in another video. If I haven't made it, feel free to leave a comment in the comment area and I'll get on it a little sooner than later if it's something you need. Any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And uh, it is off to the next video.